If you look at the electricity grids that we have in this country, in all developed countries across Europe and developed parts of the world, a lot of them were designed in the 1940s and 50s, uh, significantly enhanced in the 60s and 70s, but fundamentally have remained the same ever since. So that was designed with generation at one end of the grid, with um, big cables going down, getting thinner and thinner as you actually begin to distribute the electricity into people's homes. The way that it's been managed has been that you would have control and monitoring maybe in just the top 10% of that, so in the transmission network and in maybe the top part of the distribution network. But beyond a certain point, you're just blind. You have no sight of what's actually going on in the network below that point. A smart grid is actually moving away from that top-down uh, generation, uh, centralised generation, into a model whereby you can actually start bringing in generation at various parts in the grid and also have visibility of the grid from end to end. If we look at what's driving the need for a smart grid, um, some of the major contributors to that are the objectives we have across the European Union to reduce our uh, emissions uh, by 20% by 2020. And in the UK, if we're going to meet our objectives, that means 30 to 35% of our electricity generation is going to have to come from renewables. So we have an ageing infrastructure um, which uh, will progressively deteriorate unless we have significant reinvestment. Another challenge is that the workforce that we have, particularly the engineers, haven't been uh, brought into the industry to backfill those that are beginning to uh, hit retirement age. When you move to a future scenario where we have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, potentially even millions of small power plants out there into big virtual power plants, you have to have an IT infrastructure in place to make that happen. You need to have that in place to help it happen from an electrical engineering point of view, to actually make it function. You also need to have it from a commercial point of view to enable you to pay people for energy that they produce and to reconcile that with energy they might consume. Some of the challenges that we face uh, in building a smart grid are that you have to make this work from an engineering point of view, so you've got to design the grids. Um, you've got to look at it from a regulator and commercial point of view. The regulations have to be in place that enable people to operate a smart grid as distinct from the type of grids that we've had. Commercially, who's going to get paid for providing what service? What does a distribution company do in the future? What services that they're providing? How do you pay the people that are actually going to be providing the distributed generation? And then technically, how, how do you actually roll out what is effectively a digitised IT infrastructure over an existing energy grid. You have all the same challenges that we faced in the IT industry. The same issues that IBM's been addressing for the last 20 years in areas of performance, how you actually get this to work when you've got millions of devices out there. Uh, systems management, how do you make sure you've got the right sort of level of software out there distributed? Um, you've got the security issues. You don't want people hacking into your smart grid technology and actually influencing, turning people's homes on and off or finding out what they're actually doing in terms of energy consumption, whether someone's in or not. And you've got all of the data that's going to flow, you know, you know, massive amounts of data compared to what we've had in the past from smart meters and smart technologies all through the grid. So IBM's been involved in this, um, in, in many aspects of actually developing smart grids, working with the companies that produce these sorts of devices that can go into the grid to monitor them, to provide the IT infrastructure to support it. We've also worked with a number of energy companies to look at what is a pragmatic business case behind taking the first steps towards a smart grid. One of the projects that uh, has the, the greatest scope end-to-end -end is probably the GridWise uh, project, which we did in the United States. Um, there in Washington State, uh, working with a number of uh, other companies in, under the Gridwise uh, Alliance, which is sponsored by the Department of Energy, we looked at doing a complete end-to-end -end smart grid trial in just over 100 homes. This included putting a, uh, appliances into the homes that had uh, technology that would enable them to sense when the grid was under stress and to react to five-minute price changes. So you had to put the whole IT infrastructure in from end-to-end, -end, simulating a five-minute change uh, of energy prices five minute by five minute. That ran over a whole year and there was significant periods when they had a 50% reduction in, uh, in peak demand. And ultimate savings for end customers were in the 10 to 15% uh, savings in terms of energy. So I think that one proves that you can actually make this thing work from end to end.